Hey, hello. Let's have a bit more of Tom Fletcher's The Christmas Saurus and the Winter Witch. Tonight, for our read-along, chapter 28, Forever Frozen. You ready with your book? Let's go. Are you okay? William's mum asked him. William was too stunned to say anything. You must have had quite a fall. What are you doing out this late on your own? She went on. I, I, I... The words just didn't come out. William stopped trying to say anything and instead just stared at his mother. Her eyes were brown like his and her hair was shorter than in a lot of the photos he'd seen of her, but he liked it. She wore a smart coat with sparkly shoes that William thought looked like the sort you'd wear to a party. Are you being quiet because I'm a stranger and you're not supposed to talk to them? Well, that makes sense. And it's smart. A molly, said his mum and she stuck out her hand. As William made to put his trembling hand out to shake hers, she snatched it away and blew a raspberry. It was childish, but its unexpectedness made William give a genuine laugh. That's better, Molly smiled. Now, you know my name. I'm not a stranger. Let me take you home. Do you live round here? William hadn't even noticed where he'd landed when they fell out of time. They were a few streets away from their own wonky little house, except this was the past, and William remembered that his mum and dad hadn't moved into that house until they were married. He thought, judging by how young his mum looked right now, that their wonky little house probably wasn't theirs yet. He started to say no, but for some reason it came out as, yeah, I live a few streets away. Then lead the way, let's get you home. She smiled and stepped aside for William to go first. What date is it? he asked, trying to find out which year had fallen into. The date? <laughs> you must know what the date is. William didn't. It's Christmas Eve, the big night. That's why you should be getting home, getting ready for a little visit, if you know what I mean. And she winked. That's if you've been good. You have been good, right? I made a few mistakes, but I'm trying to make up for them tonight. Well, there's always enough time for righting wrongs. They fell silent as they carried on down the street. William tried to think of something else to say. Oh, I like your shoes. Thanks. I'm on my way to a date. A first date, actually, said Molly, smiling. On Christmas Eve? Yes, and he is totally nuts about Christmas, so I'm surprising him with this. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a beautiful snow globe. William's heart was racing. He recognised it instantly. It had a cosy, hand-carved little log cabin inside. It was the one his dad got out every Christmas. William's mum had given it to his dad on their very first date. Bob had kept it all these years. Then his heart raced even more. His mum was on her way to meet his dad right now. I made it myself. Do you think he's going to like it? He's going to love it, William smiled. Then suddenly realised that must sound really odd. How could he possibly know what the boyfriend of a total stranger he'd only just met would like? I mean, I'd like that if I were him. Tucking the snow globe back into her pocket, Molly glanced at William suspiciously for a moment, then chuckled as they came to the corner of the street. The evening was magical. Stars overhead twinkled with the crisp Christmas Eve sky. The houses looked warm and inviting, with Christmas trees lighting up the windows, and the faint sound of carolers from nearby streets became the soundtrack to their journey. Without thinking, William led them to his house. It looked just as it did in William's time. It was a little less wonky in places and the paint on the guttering was fresh. Still, it was home. Except it wasn't, not then. Someone else lived there now, so there was no way William was going to be able to go inside. Um, th this is me, he said nervously as they slowed, then stopped at the not-so-crooked gate. Molly looked at the house. It was half the size of the rest of the houses in the street, but something about it felt inviting. It looks perfect cosy lucky you yeah it is well it's a bit of a tight squeeze now that it's not just me and dad oh said molly william paused he couldn't tell her about her husband's future but as she looked at him with her beautiful kind eyes he just wanted to tell her everything now it's me dad his new girlfriend and her daughter i see do you like her your dad's new girlfriend she asked casually leaning on wall oh yeah pamela's great i mean it's been a bit weird getting used to having more people living in our little house, and at first she hated Christmas, so that's taken her a bit of time to get used to. Hated Christmas? Remind me never to introduce her to the boy I'm meeting tonight. He'd do her head in, said Molly, rolling her eyes. Yeah, he does. I mean, he would, if they were ever to meet. 
They both paused for a moment. Well, maybe next time you're finding your new family a bit strange, remember that she's probably finding it just as weird as you, Molly said simply. I, I never thought of it like that, William said. And the more he thought about it, the more he realised it was true. He'd never stopped to wonder if Pamela ever found it hard to get used to their new life together like he did. I suppose you'd better be getting inside. I'm imagining your dad and Pamela are very worried about you being out so late on Christmas Eve, Molly said, nodding towards the front door. William sighed as she swung the gate open for him. Merry Christmas. Wait, you didn't tell me your name. William, he said with a smile. William. A lovely name, that is. Thanks for walking me home, William said, and without thinking, he opened his arms for a hug. Molly did not hesitate. As her arms wrapped around him, William regretted pouring all the potion he'd found into the Christmasaurus mouth. If he could, he would have stayed frozen in this moment forever. But like all the most wonderful things in life, it had to end. As they pulled apart, William felt something fall out of his dressing gown pocket and hit the pavement with a high-pitched ding. What's that? Molly asked. From the sound it made, he knew it couldn't have been the fluffy wish, and he started to wonder how on earth he was going to explain it if Santa's beliefometer had fallen out. But as Molly bent down to pick it up, William saw that it wasn't either of those things. It was the Winter Witch's frozen goblet, only it wasn't frozen anymore, and he could now see that it was no longer a goblet either. Perhaps it was the warmth of the belief beliefometer or the fluffiness of the wish, but whatever the reason... The glittering icicles had melted and the thick frost had thawed to way to reveal a most beautiful glistening blue teacup with a snowflake-shaped handle. William gasped. He couldn't believe his eyes. It was exactly the same as the one that he had belonged to his mother, the one that Pamela kept accidentally using. Wow, this is beautiful, Molly said, admiring the pretty teacup. Whose is it? Yours, William said without thinking. Mine? she frowned. William's heart raced. It was the truth. It was her teacup. He'd seen it in his kitchen throughout his life, watched his dad drink out of it sometimes when he felt lonely, and remembered how he couldn't bear to get rid of it. Yeah, it's a Christmas present from me to you, William told her. That's really sweet of you, but I couldn't possibly accept such a lovely thing, Molly said, giving the teacup back to William. No, I insist it's yours. Consider it a thank you for taking me home. Molly looked at the ornate cup in her hands. Well, if you're sure, absolutely, William grinned. Then I'll think of you whenever I have a cup of tea, she said with a smile. And William had never felt happier than he did at that very moment. Well, time to be off. Merry Christmas, William. Molly gave him a little wave as she started to walk away. Merry Christmas, William called after her. Mum? Oh, that's a cute little chapter. Next chapter is called Lost in Time. Oh, that was cute, that chapter, wasn't it? Gosh. Gave you all the warm feelings, didn't it? <laughs> all right. See you tomorrow.